Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. So take a deep breath, stretch, do whatever you need to get comfy, and just open your mind and your heart to all that our music and our service has to offer today. May it be a blessing. and 
of you out there in love streaming land. I'm Reverend Edith Washington Woods and I'd like to welcome you to our Sunday service on this day. And let us start with a prayer. Let us pray. God, infinite presence, the source of our beingness, we are so grateful for this wonderful, amazing day that we can affirm in this moment that all is good, for God is good, and all is God. We're grateful that we get to share this time together. May we do it, may we receive it, and may we then share it from deeply within. And so it is. Amen. And if you'll say our affirmation with me, it is guided, guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by, by divine love, we go forward to unity, unity to, to realize our spiritual potential. potential. And again, I'd like to welcome all of you here, wherever you are in the country or in the world. <sighs> yeah, so. We also want to introduce to you our vision statement, those who don't know it and those who already know it, we're going to say it together. Let's say it. We are a world powerfully transformed through the growing spiritual movement of shared spiritual awakening. I just want to make everything spiritual. I don't want to put spiritual <laughs> in there. Yeah. So that's bigger than we can see here as Unity San Diego. 
It's actually the outpicturing of you out there joining us, that we get to create this shared spiritual awakening together. And then we have our mission statement, which is who we believe we are as Unity San Diego. And perhaps you'll share that with us, too. And let's say it together. We're empowering personal growth through positive spiritual principles, inspirational music, and community service. And our opening song is Happiness is Found Within by Carmen Moser. Mm -hmm. within and now it's time for us to greet each other and you can greet uh, in the chat box and what we're going to say is happiness is found within me and you let's say that happiness, happiness is, is found, found within, within me and you happiness is found within me, me and, and you. you happiness is found within me, me and, and you. you and now we have our lovely Associate Minister, Reverend Carla Leitner, with our announcements. So, here we are with our announcements again, and we know again that church is not confined to these four walls, because you're with us today, and you can be with us every day. So due to the increase in the COVID-19 cases in the last few weeks, we are actually not going to have any more in-service, in-person services until further notice. It will happen down the line, friends, but right now, thank God, it's such a blessing that we do have Facebook Live, we have Zoom, we have YouTube, and so we are still being able to worship together. Please also join us on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. with either Reverend Edith or myself, as well as wonderful people, Kathy Robertson and Billy K. Bouton, that also pray at 9 a.m. on Facebook. And it's on Facebook Live, but if you miss it, you can always go at any time to unitysandiego.org. It will post right on our front page, or you can go back on, po on Facebook and see that. Immediately after our service today, we are going to have fellowship on Zoom. Now, we don't place the Zoom link right on our camera here, but there will be someone that is putting the Zoom link uh, the password and the ID, the meeting ID into the chat box so that you'll be able to to join us today. We have a, quite a group. So we'll hope to see you there today about a, a little after 11, about 11.15. So I invite you now to sing our meditation hymn, 
with our music team, God is My Guide by Aaron McGowan. even taking a gentle breath, breathing in and out. And to know that God is all. Mm. And in this moment, we open up to the awareness of who we are called to be. to understand happiness and the pursuit of happiness. And we take a moment to think about something or someone who has created for us the possibility of being happy. Perhaps it was a parent or a sibling, perhaps it was a friend or a colleague or someone who caused us to experience happiness. For that which we share with them, we feel from within. For happiness is within us. And so we take a moment as we contemplate happiness and how it feels in our body and move into a time of silence. And we say these words to ourselves, I experience happiness now. I experience happiness now. Now, I experience happiness now in the silence we join together and go deeper 
deeper within. Experiencing happiness. I am experiencing happiness now. And in this expanded state of awareness, we bring into our hearts and minds that which we are contemplating that we are happy for. Happiness is from within. And we consider all in this world extending happiness from ourselves to the outside of us, spreading that vibration of happiness now. And in this moment, we take it in that happiness is from within. And we feel it, we experience it, we give thanks for it, and then we allow it to radiate out from us. In this moment, we are happiness in expression. And so it is. Amen. And now we have the Lord's Prayer. So there's a lot of viewpoints on how to be happy. A lot of people think that happiness comes from situations, people, and they look for happiness 
in those places, and it's definitely there to be found. However, when those situations or people don't behave at, or the situation doesn't turn out how we want it to be, oftentimes we get pulled into something other than happiness. So if we keep up with the motto that happiness comes from within, we can be more stable in our world and not be so swayed away from happiness because of situations or people. This song is called If You Want to Be Happy, and it's written by Sloan Rainwright, Janice Stanfield, and Sue Riley. And it has a number of words that are great advice on how to stay happy. There's a lot of words. I'm going to do my best to pronounce them so you can understand them. So uh, this is If You Want to Be Happy. <laughs> Keep your mind off your thoughts Focus on the things you have, not what you haven't got Thoughts can keep you up at night, they'll drive you to the brink Thoughts can make you crazy, don't believe all that you think If you want to if you want to be happy, be careful what you say. Resist the urge to criticize when things don't go your way. Can't make yourself feel better, putting other people down. Remember words can hurt you when they come back around. If you want to be happy, gotta give up control. Take your hands off the wheel, let the dice roll. When you give up competition, there can be no power play. Trust the mystery and let the chips fall where they may. to be happy, right? Mm -hmm. Many of us want to be happy. We really, really want to be happy. But what does that mean, happiness? Well, I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary online, and this is what it said about happiness. It said it's a state of well-being and contentment. It's joy or a pleasurable or satisfying experience. So I want to tell you about a story I found in Chicken Soup for the Soul. And the title of this story is Academic Excellence Begins with a 51 Studebaker, like 1951 Studebaker. So the gentleman, this gentleman, David Ford, he went to school, like many of us did, as a, in elementary, and he, he didn't do too good with his um, grades. Not good at all. 
really, really not good. And his father was a tinker around. So when um, David was a, a young guy, adolescent, he found a 1951 red Studebaker. And it looked kind of like this. That's an old dilapidated, dilapidated looking thing, isn't it? But him and his father started tinkering around with it. And he took this uh, really terrible looking thing and he brought it to being a, a very shiny, beautiful 1951 Studebaker. Now, it might not have been quite that shiny, but you get the contrast, right? And this was the thing that shifting had shifted David. Why? Because all of a sudden, everyone was talking about what David had done with that car and how the car went from the way it looked to being the way it became. Now, it's not that it didn't have that in it within, you know, it always had the possibility of looking like that. And I'm sure when it was in 1951, when it was built, it probably looked really closely to that. But this was in the 60s uh, when he was a kid. And he went to school and had trouble with algebra. And his mom sent him to this tutor and the tutor asked him, what did he like? And he started talking about the pistons and the carburetor and all of the things that are under the hood of the 1951 Red Studebaker. And she asked him, do you want to be a mechanic? And he thought, well, I don't want to be a mechanic because a lot of guys go to school to be a mechanic. And the teacher said, well, think about what it would be like if we didn't have any mechanics, like none. Well, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Could you imagine? No mechanics and you had cars that needed to be serviced? And so he, she said to him, why don't you consider algebra like a mechanic? And if you didn't have algebra to get through to the next stage in your life, how that would be if we had no one who were mathematicians, I'll say that. Well, he approached it like she suggested, and he got a B in algebra that year. The first B he had ever gotten in his life, like ever. And what he discovered is that he was a really good B student. Isn't that amazing? Like thinking that you could never achieve that, but then actually it happens because of a car. And he went on to to pursue happiness in his life. And as a result, he, he went into the Air Force, and he did so well. They said he was so good with mechanics, they sent him to, to um, jet school, is what they called it. I don't know what that means, but he went to jet school. And then he became a first sergeant 22 years later. He earned a couple of college degrees, and he ended up teaching aerospace science in high school. But how do we really understand the pursuit of happiness? Well, on July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was ratified and part of it stated this. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what is the pursuit of happiness? At the time that it was written in 1776, people were enslaved. Native Americans were stripped of their land. How must we the people pursue happiness? Well, 
In the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and 13, it says, a happy heart make the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. Now in the book, The Pursuit of Happiness, the author, Chris Gardner, he narrated his life and he had been homeless and then he ended up becoming a stockbroker. It also became a movie that Will Smith had, um, he, he played Gardner. But here's what really struck me in that book. He said, he wondered when Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he looked at the word pursuit and wondered, what does that mean and why did he write it, pursuit, in there? Does it mean that we are always chasing it? Some do chase after the pursuit. Some get a really good feeling about dreaming about that pursuit and then some, it never happens. Some create it. You know, the pursuit of happiness in the Declaration of Independence was something that we choose to create as we pursue it. On Friday, we lost two civil rights icons who, create, who helped to create a movement to pursue what Thomas Jefferson talked about, that all men are created equal. I'm talking about the Reverend Dr. C.T. Vivian and Representative John Lewis. Now, some of you may not know about Reverend C.T. Vivian. He was an early civil rights organizer and field general for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr and also was involved in the SCLC, which is uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And who he was was a stand for justice and freedom. Who he was was someone who was really cognizant on all men and women and people having the pursuit of happiness. He died on Friday morning in his home in Atlanta. And I actually met him. He had come to Syracuse University, um, I don't know, eight years or something ago. And, and I met him and, and I thanked him for his service. John Lewis was the last living person who spoke at the March on Washington in 1963. Some people don't know that because we always tend to talk about the I have a dream speech that Dr. Martin Luther King um, had state, stated. But John Lewis spoke at that, that day on the March on Washington at the age of 23. Wow, I, I don't even know if I could have like got up there with thousands of people. I'm going to speak now. <laughs> And, and listen, his speech was going to be kind of radical a bit, and, and um, they had to talk to him and tone him down and say, not quite like that. We don't want to, like, have people be afraid. I mean, you know, 23, you think you can, you've been there before, right? I'm just going to tell the world everything I want. So he toned it down. And this is some of what he said. He said, we will march with the spirit of love and with the spirit of dignity that we have shown here today. At the end of the speech, he had a call to all of us. He said, wake up America, wake up, for we cannot stop and we will not and cannot be patient, of course, out of the eyes and mouth of a 23 year old. Both of these men marched. Both of them were beaten. Reverend Vivian, as a reverend, and sometimes with his collar on, one day was knocked in the face with a fist down steps and then taken to jail and beaten for freedom and justice for all. John Lewis, as many of us seen on the Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, was knocked in his head, hit in his head, 
And I believe he even had a plate in his head because of it. Head split wide open. And, and yet, both of these men lived. Vivian lived until age 95, 13 days before he was going to be 96. And John Lewis, until he was 80. He was born, I believe, February 21st, 1940. And they continued to fight for freedom and justice for all. See, it's really about understanding what happiness is. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King said that, that no one is free until we're all free. No one is free until we're all free. So we look back at the story that I started with, with David Ford, and how he felt about people calling him stupid and how that carried on with him. But he had this something about him when it came to fixing a 1951 red Studebaker that catapulted him into his own greatness, which was already there. For we can, we can really know that happiness comes from within. Now, Dodinsky, who was a, a philosopher long time ago, like around the time Jesus was born, he said, it is not too late to change direction if you're not at peace with the life you have now. Don't put a deadline to your happiness. Don't put a deadline to your pursuit of happiness. So when we're honoring these two men who were pillars of our society, why would they want to put their lives on the line for change? It is because of what the, the, the Declaration of Independence declares for us when it says that uh, all men and women were created equal and that we each have these inalienable rights to the pursuit of happiness, that we all have the ability to have the things we want and to be free. That is never too late, too late for that. And he, um, John Lewis, has now handed the baton to us. And I heard a quote by someone um, within the last two days that said, he took the baton, like the baton that was hitting him over the head, and turned it into, mm, I just said it and I forgot that quick. He turned it into, um, you know, a baton to, to hand off to other people. That we get to create that change all of us. And so as people who were in the civil rights movement, whoever they are, and there are so many of them, are now completing the end of our lives, their lives, that we are called to understand happiness in a way that we hadn't before. To understand the Declaration of Independence in a way that we had not before. You know, Charles Fulmore, the co-founder of Unity, he said, this is what it's like to be understanding. Now, understanding is our power of the month. And he said, it is that in man which comprehends. So how do we comprehend something when we get these examples from people of how we get to be? That we can see that understanding is part of who we are. That understanding is part of where we get to live into. That it's not just a pursuit of happiness like having um, degrees or, or uh, technical abilities or any of that. That really the pursuit of happiness is how we get to have it and be a stand for all. That again, until we are all free, we're not free. Buddha said, if one speaks or acts with a pure mind, happiness follows like a shadow. So you know how your shadow kind of follows you and you wonder, what, why is it there? And you see uh, dogs and cats that chase their shadow and they go round and round and round again. But if we speak from our heart, from that knowing that happiness is from within us, 
and allow it to radiate out from us, then it does follow us everywhere we go. Now here are seven steps to happiness that I would like you to consider. One, think less, feel more. So feeling from that vibration that is within our heart. Frown less and smile more. Talk less and listen more. Really listen from the intuitive space within, within us and allow it to radiate out from us. Judge less, less, accept more. Watch less, do more. Become doers, like take action. Complain less, appreciate more. Who do you appreciate today? Who is it that you could just, you know, even if you don't call them, but just think about them and say, I appreciate you. And lastly, fear less, love more. We're called to love. All of these gentlemen I mentioned today had this call to love, this call to allow love to express in, through, and as us and radiate out from us. Now, happy people take action by doing a few things. Number one, practicing gratitude. So it's like that attitude of gratitude when we wake up. We wake up in the morning, and, and I don't know if, if you're like this, but I wake up and go, OK, I made it, you know, like to another day. Because some people didn't wake up today, like Reverend Dr. Vivian and John Lewis didn't wake up on Saturday. So I'm grateful, even, even just for waking up. And gratitude can be all kinds of things. Thank you, I have shoes. Thank you, I have hair or no hair. Thank you for where I live. Thank you for the water I get to drink. I mean, it could be anything we want to choose, any little thing, it seems little, but practicing gratitude is what happy people do. Secondly, turning a frown into a smile. So, so you know how um, right now we're living in this state of beingness and it's, oh my goodness. Oh, I know Friday, I was feeling it. I was feeling it, y'all. I was like, I'm done with this. Four and a half months, I'm done. I'm ready to go back to normal. And one of my prayer partners called me out. She said, what's going on with you? You seem kind of out of sorts. And you were like that Monday when I talked to you. And I realized I was sad because I miss all the people who I get to see when I come here on Sundays. Yes, I know you guys, I get to see you. We've been seeing each other for four and a half months. But you know what I mean? Like, people, and, and I think about people, and I'm like, I wonder how's that person doing, and how's that person doing, and yet, we're, our lives are full. Those of us who are working here, those of us who are volunteering here, we spend a lot of time to come to today. And so, I had to turn my frown to a smile. Third, laughing often, like laughing out loud. And when we laugh, it, 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 it raises our vibration. And so I'll put on something that will have me laugh and, and really feel good, even if it doesn't make any sense at all. The fourth thing, enjoying exploring. Like exploring new things. What is it that you want to learn that's new? There's these wonderful coloring books now that people have, you have some of them? I have a lot of them. And, and, and I could just like really explore that or explore the outdoors or exploring something new, like a new language or, or something like that. But exploring is another thing that happy people do. The fifth thing is doing things we love. What do you love to do? When I really, really need to get in that space, I like to dance. And this, this music team right there, they help me do that. They don't know it, but, well, yes, they do. <laughs> and when I'm, when I'm dancing, I feel so happy, so happy. And the sixth thing is taking care of others, taking care of someone else. And it could be a two-legged something or a four-legged something. It could be a fish in the deep blue sea called our aquariums or a fishbowl. But taking care of something can make us happy. And lastly, staying positive. 
having that sense of positivity, even if it doesn't appear to be that way. That when we seek being positive, we're actually radiating out that happiness that happy people do. All right. So our affirmation can assist us with where we are going with understanding happiness. And I'm going to say it once and then invite you to say it with me. It is, I am receiving the vibration of happiness in my heart, mind, and body. Together, I am receiving the vibration of happiness in my heart, mind, and body. One more time. I am receiving the vibration of happiness in my heart, mind, and body. Now let's just take that in within for a moment. And just come again to your, bring to your mind when you thought about some situation, person, that caused you to feel happy. And just bring that to your mind again and know that the happiness that you're considering in your brain that you're thinking about and you're feeling now, that the happiness is coming from within. And so we raise our vibration level even more as we consider and contemplate happiness in our heart, mind, and body. And we say this affirmation one more time together. I am receiving the vibration of happiness in my heart, mind, and body. And so it is. Amen. And namaste. And now we have a fun little song, I Am So Happy. It's a little bit silly, but it's so much fun to sing. <laughs> yeah. We go one, two, one, two, three, and. it to just stop like that. <laughs> wow. You know, I was thinking, Reverend Edith, about when you talked about uh, the pursuit of happiness and uh, uh, way back then. And it reminded me of what the heck are they doing for fun? Yeah. You know, like were they trying, what, what did they do back then? And it also made me think about how wonderful, how grat grateful I am and that we have so many things to do now and that we can still connect even though we're not here. I can't imagine hollering over you know, 
to the barn and anybody here, well, they might hear me, I'm loud, but, you know, I just, I just wondered what, it, maybe they were trying to find things to do. Anyways, next Sunday's lesson is Release Your Inner Awesome with me. It is also Christmas in July. So it'll be an awesome, awesome time. So now is our time of giving and receiving. So we have a basket here that represents the tithes and the offerings that we would be having if everyone was sitting in our sanctuary. Um, we can also go to our website, unitysandiego.org, and click on our button. It goes directly to PayPal, so it's very easy and safe. Or you can mail in a check. The address for Unity San Diego should be right there on the screen, as well as our website, unitysandiego.org. Now, there's many prayer opportunities here at Unity San Diego. We have a prayer ministry that actually answers the phone Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The number is on your screen. And uh, it's so nice to be able to talk to someone and to be able to give our feelings, our thoughts, our intentions, and our requests and prayers. We also have prayer chaplains who are praying for us all the time. So... I invite you to call our prayer ministry. I invite you to uh, email. I invite you to hold your prayer requests and, and send them out to us. Now is our time again of, of giving and receiving. And so we have some, an offering blessing that will say twice out loud and once in the silence. I'm going to grab my offering. So I invite you to take your offering if you can, hold it in your hands, or you can just hold your hands out, um, or whatever you'd like to do, and say this with me twice out loud and once in the silence. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. One more time. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. Let's just say that once and more in the silence. And Mother, Father, God, sweet spirit, we know that we are blessed. We are blessed when we can offer an offering. We are blessed when we receive. And so we say thank you, thank you for these gifts. And so it is. Amen. Now... We have a very special song. I need to change microphones here. There we go. Okay, so now we have a really, really special song. I sang it, I think, six years ago. It's been six years since I sang it here. Um, Happy by Pharrell Williams. And it's really, today, we're going to dedicate it to the late, great John Lewis, who truly, truly loved this song. And as we sing it, I'd like to bless Mr. Lewis as he moves on in his spiritual journey, knowing that we are forever, ever here. We are forever alive. And we are blessing him as he moves forward. So, this is happy. One, two, three, and...
such lovely singers with me. Thank you. That was so fun. Yay. So now, Reverend Edith, if you want to come up here with me, and we will bless the offerings that came in. Would you like to start? Well, I'm a little out of breath. Whew. I was really dancing. I'm really happy. Ah, thank you. Thank you for making my heart today. Yay. Okay. We take a moment to give thanks for these tithes and love offerings. Oh God, oh spirit, oh infinite presence, the life within us, the love within us, the vibration of us that we're so happy about on this day. We give thanks to the tithes and love offerings and all of those who have given in whatever form and way they have given. And know that we each are giving to each other on this day by being here. And we know that it is a continuous flow, a continuous flow of prosperity. As we give, so shall we receive. And we are open to giving, open to receiving, and we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, God, for all these blessings, because it is so much more, and always, always in prosperity. So it is. Amen. Amen. And, and now we have the prayer we box. We have the prayer box. We do have our prayer box here. It's a beautiful, beautiful, lovely prayer box. I'm not sure if you can see it with the beautiful hands on here. Um, when, if we were here, we would have our prayer requests and letters in the box, but that's okay because it's here to represent our prayers, our intentions, our requests, and our affirmations that we have, that we either hold in the silence, we write in, we call in, or even those that are on our heart and we're just finding right now. So our prayer ministry does pray over these for 30 days. Every prayer is confidential. So I encourage you again to call in as well. But let's take a, a moment to just pray over, pray over these intentions. Knowing, Mother, Father, God, that 
Every intention that we have, every affirmation, every word is a prayer. And that as we pray over all these prayers that are throughout the world, that we know that the highest good, the highest good and divine order is always, always in charge, knowing that we are here as an expression of the Christ presence, as the expression of love, joy, peace, and unity. And that with divine order and the highest good, we will not fail. And we say, thank you, God. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Please join us now as we sing More Than Enough by Daniel Neyman. There is more than enough in a universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Richest blessings, my friends. Have a wonderful, amazing week. Let your vibration show your and demonstrate your happiness. Namaste. Namaste.
Thank you. Have a good week. Ha, 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 ha.